This course is about the NatSpec National BIM Guide, which was first released by NatSpec in September 2011. During this course, you will not only learn about the National BIM Guide, but also become familiar with many important topics associated with BIM in general. This lesson provides an overview of the guide, including some of it, the background to its development. In later lessons, we will examine it in more detail and show you how to use it. Understanding the National BIM Guide and the practical issues it seeks to address will help you to manage your BIM projects more effectively. Now let's look at the reason NatSpec developed it in the first place. NatSpec developed the National BIM Guide largely in response to numerous inquiries it received about BIM guidelines. Although there were plenty of documents that fell under the heading of BIM Guide, none seemed to be quite what people were looking for. Some guides provided information on BIM at a very general level. Other guides provide detailed direction on particular aspects of BIM, such as modelling standards or information exchange protocols. Also, most of the guides were written for building industries outside of Australia. While these guides could provide valuable information, no one felt they could point to one of them and say, this is the BIM guide we can use as the central reference on our next project. The search for guidance on BIM was symptomatic of the changes occurring in the construction industry. The new and emerging nature of BIM resulted in the following related issues. Firstly, practical guidance on managing BIM projects was not widely available. Secondly, the generally accepted work practices for BIM were not yet established. Finally, there was not a common understanding of what was meant by BIM, especially as applies to projects. These issues are still relevant today. This means that when a group of people get together to work on a construction project, they will often have significantly different ideas and expectations out about BIM. So the client might ask for a full BIM on that project without having a clear picture of exactly what this means or how much it might cost. Or two consultants say they can do BIM. One might be an advanced user of BIM with well-developed systems for managing model information and exchanging it with others, while the other only uses 3D modelling within their own organisation. Despite the large differences in capabilities, both consider they are doing BIM. If the project gets underway with everyone having different assumptions and expectations, it is inevitable that there will be problems later. To avoid this, everyone's expectations need to be spelt out and any differences resolved. All this needs to happen before detailed project planning can take place. It is especially important when working with BIM because each specific use of BIM, such as cost planning or thermal analysis, has significant sets of data associated with it that have to be inputted, managed and updated as the project evolves. This is where the NatSpec National BIM Guide comes in. By providing a common framework for discussions between everyone involved on the project, it can help them to resolve this issue. The Nat National BIM Guide has been designed as a tool to help everyone clarify their BIM requirements for construction projects. NatSpec hopes that the National BIM Guide will become widely adopted so that a consistent approach to implementing BIM on projects is developed nationally. This would save a lot of duplication of effort from project to project. Of course, the information guide and guidance the National BIM Guide provides is important, but it could be said that this strategic function is even more important. Now that we've looked at the purpose and role of the National BIM Guide, what are its general characteristics? The National BIM Guide provides a framework that is flexible enough to accommodate the different requirements of projects and project teams. We will see how it does this in later lessons. In line with NatSpec policy, the National BIM Guide supports open global systems so information is not locked into any one proprietary system. This facilitates the ready exchange of information within the industry for extended periods of time. The National BIM Guide sets minimum standards to establish a baseline of quality for current BIM practice. It is comprehensive in scope, but it does not cover every topic in depth. Instead, it focuses on the key issues that should be addressed to ensure a good project outcome, rather than giving detailed instructions or prescribing a set method. The nature of the National BIM Guide is reflected in the language it uses. You'll find more statements like, at a minimum, the project team shall address the following, rather than, the project team shall do X, Y and Z. The National BIM Guide summarises many of the elements that need to be addressed in a BIM-based project in a document that can be referenced by all stakeholders. In many ways, it acts as a checklist for the whole project team. This may seem a fairly basic function, but given the widely varying different uh, expectations about BIM and the absence of an industry-accepted standard, 
it's a very significant one. And one more thing about the National BIM Guide. It's not a single document, but a set of four documents that are designed to be used together. In later lessons, we'll look at each document in more detail and see how they have been structured to allow them to be adapted to suit the different requirements of individual projects. So, how is the National BIM Guide meant to be used in practice? For one thing, it's not intended the National BIM Guide be simply handed to a project team as a standard to be followed. It is intended to be used broadly in three ways during different stages of the project. During initial discussions between project stakeholders, it provides a framework for discussions and a comprehensive list of items for consideration when deciding the scope of BIM use on the project. For example, a lead consultant could send it to the client for this purpose. It is at this point that the National BIM Guide fulfills its primary purpose, to assist stakeholders to clarify the BIM requirements. At project planning stages and prior to project commencement, it provides a means of documenting mutually agreed decisions about how BIM is to be implemented. Then, during the execution of the project, it provides a common reference to communicate and enact decisions made about BIM implementation to project participants. It follows that the National BIM Guide has the most value when it is used from project inception. This helps get everyone on the same page from day one. To use the National BIM Guide on projects, you have to fill in the project's BIM requirements in the project BIM brief. Now, to summarise the key points of this lesson, the National BIM Guide was developed to address the lack of a common understanding of BIM. Its purpose is to assist stakeholders clarify their BIM requirements for construction projects in a nationally consistent manner. The National BIM Guide focuses on outcomes rather than prescribing a fixed approach to BIM. It is a framework document with a strategic function beyond simply providing information. And finally, the National BIM Guide is comprised of four related documents and the most value can be gained by using it from project inception.